All right, my all-time favorite of collecting shadow and highlights onto an object without going through the trouble of doing this little maneuver is just simply clicking on the object itself and going into an effect and using um, an effect of feather. What I could do now is go to preview and then up this. And then I get a nice smooth gradient going across the surface. Isn't that nice? Again, that works for shadow and highlights, so I can go in here. Now that I've expanded this, I can take this shape. I still keep everything on a different layer just for, you know, I, I want it, I want that workflow to go. So here I got this shadow. I'm on that layer. Go to effects, stylize, feather. Then I can preview that and I can feather that in. Now notice how fast it drops off. It, fast, it drops off so fast because if you look at the variance that's occurring here, you're going from a 0 0.01 to already a 0 0.13. So sometimes you have to type in a 0 0.05 and just kind of think of that, how it's going to work throughout your illustration and always do that. Okay. Now, if you look inside that effect palette, there is a lot of these. So you might want to practice or look at something that might match your style. Uh, under stylize, there's drop shadows, arrowheads, inners and outer glows. So if I was to do something like this and say have an inner glow on that, I don't know why I would do that, but I could inner glow it. This might work on a, actually this might work on a highlight better than anything else. So I'm going to choose to pick on a highlight, which I'm out of. So I'll make the blob tool and make a new highlight in here. Okay, there's my highlight. So under the effects, I could do an inner glow and I could preview that, which kind of gives me uh, maybe a version of, you know, a rounded surface in here. And I can use various screen methods for that, just like I did before. So maybe an overlay, maybe a soft light, but really screen's going to be as powerful as it gets. And I could center it and then I can make one of these parts. So I can make, you know, this shadowed in part where a concave surface and I can make uh, maybe, you know, a tube or a different form coming off of this form. So that's a very nice way to make forms coming off other forms too. If I use the same red and then I do the effect stylize inner glow and do a preview with centered I can now sh mimic um, that, that top color being the fact that it looks like a different form coming off. Also, I could choose from a color, because this is white, or a color swatch, which I now have over here. So many different ways to do it. Now, I'm not li just limited to this outline either. Because under brushes, you know, I could play around with a different thing instead of using the blob tool for each one. I can make shapes like this all day long. And then maybe, you know, for the outline, I could choose a different kind of stroke and then make that stroke black or, you know, a darker variation thereof. 
But what's going to happen here quickly is you're going to get to the fact that if you use this workflow, it's going to look awkward sometimes to do that. Because now I got this thing going around where the feather effect doesn't match uh, the in, inner glow or an outer glow. So just be careful when you're using such a method like this. Make sure you use the brush command first and then you can go up and do the effect and then it will work quite nicely. I like my, I myself like the stylized lines like this using the blob tool. These uh, feel a little bit more manufactured even though they are even they are random as far as how they go around the object sometimes like this one's not so bad but if I wanted that to start on the other side and go around I can just double click here and then I could flip it along a different axis and now I flip that brush around All right, so that, those are methods of lines and styles within Illustrator. So let's go on to the next video.